uh, scientific articles and uh, 50 book chapters in entomology and other natural history. He is with us today. It's indeed a privilege to have him with us here. I extend a warm welcome and invite to share his knowledge with us. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Sharanya. And uh, students, hope you had a nice day today. And uh, we will have uh, uh, a discussion on insects. Uh, yeah. Uh, the moment you uh, hear or see insects, uh, you hate them, isn't it? Uh, but uh, through this uh, lecture, you will come to know that insects are lovable. They are creepy, crawly, and uh, dirty creatures. And that's what we believe in. But it's not so. Uh, insects are very interesting. They're highly diversified. And uh, insects uh, are uh, classified or grouped into several groups. But there are 30 major groups to which the insects are uh, divided. Okay, so they're categorized into 30 orders. Now, insects belong to the animal kingdom. They belong to arthropoda and they belong to class uh, insecta. Uh, now, all insects are arthropods. Now, what do you mean by arthropods? Arthropods means uh, they are the creatures with the jointed appendages. So if you see any organ of insects externally, you will see then that they consist of numerous segments, small uh, segments. So they have jointed legs and you can uh, flex them or you can bend them and their bodies are segmented. That means they are cut into or divided into several small uniform segments. And the third thing is that they have exoskeleton, exoskeleton. That means the skeleton is outside their body. So we have, uh, as you know, skeleton inside our body, isn't it, uh, children? But on the other hand, on the contrary, insects have their skeleton outside their body and it is made up of predominantly a protein called as the chitin. So chitin makes up the exoskeleton and these insects uh, you know are closely related to spiders i hope you must have seen the spiders you must have seen the uh, millipedes uh, round dark brown creatures you know uh, crawling over the uh, wet soil then i'm sure you might have also seen the dreaded scorpions so these insects are very very closely related to this group of uh, creatures on earth now, what is the main character by which you can differentiate or distinguish insects from other group of creatures or invertebrates? Students, you must be knowing that 75% of all creatures on Earth, planet Earth, including humans, are all insects. 90% of all the animals are invertebrates. So invertebrates to which insects belong constitute 90% of uh, the beings on the planet Earth. And 
these insects can be distinguished from other creatures by having three main parts. They are called as head, thorax, and abdomen. So these are the three divisions uh, of the insect. And these insects, they bear a, uh, on the forehead, a, uh, uh, what you call a uh, antenna, what you call as antenna. And these antenna are nothing but uh, stick-like, uh, flexible, uh, brown, segmented uh, structures. So they are sensory in nature. So they can deduct. With three pairs of legs are uh, what we call as six legs. Okay. And they're all born on the thorax. So insects, majority of the insects also have a pair of wings. You know, they can fly. So you must have seen dragonflies, you must have seen butterflies, you must have seen moths. So these are all the insects and these insects are capable of flight because they have wings. Now, as I already told you that insect body parts has the front wing or the forewing and they have the hind wing and then they have the head, thorax and abdomen and they have three pairs of legs and a pair of antennae okay so these are the main uh, morphological features of the insects students uh, if you count the number of uh, legs in an insect there will be three pairs okay so one pair uh, second pair and the third pair so these are located in the thoracic region that's a middle region of the insect then there are always six legs and they're all attached to the thorax and antennae. So what is the function of antennae? I told you a function of the antennae is to sense. Okay. So they uh, sense the direction, they sense the odorants and these are also jointed uh, uh, what you call um, uh, structures and they're also called as feeders. So before the insect eats anything, it can feel what sort of uh, chemical the food has and uh, uh, the uh, antennae are made up of lot of uh, segments which vary in size greatly and uh, these antennae may also be modified so because we have incredible number of insects so these insects have various forms of antennae and these are classified based on the structures they bear on the antennae so they may be aristate, just like we found in houseflies, or they may be lamellate, that means leaf-like, as we find in some of the long econ beetles. And then we have the serrate, then we have the uh, flabulate, then we have moniliform, for example, termites. Termites antennae are bead-like. You must be knowing bead, isn't it? So these antennae, they contain bead-like segments. Then uh, honeybees have geniculate. Geniculate means the segments are born at an angle to the base of the antennae. So like this, the antennae based upon the shape of the structures are classified into various categories. Now, all insects are not winged. So you must be wondering that there must also be insects which cannot fly. You are right. Okay. So most adults have two pairs of wings. They are called fore wings and hind wings. And some insects are wingless. Students, I'm sure you must have seen silver silverfish. Okay, a lightning type of uh, uh, insects, no? And when you disturb the books, which are not um, read for a very long time, you can find this uh, uh, silverfish uh, wriggling out of the books. So they are called as a silverfish. And then you must have also heard about fleas. Now, fleas are there. Uh, and then we have termites, we have ants. So these are all the uh, insects which do not have wings. So they are devoid of uh, wings. And these wings, they have uh, a set of neural network. That means these uh, wings are innovated 
are they are ingrained with a network of the veins so they are called as a neural network so based on this network of veins uh, we can classify uh, the insects and what's the function of this uh, neural network you might ask me a question so this is to give strength to the uh, insects so uh, we have uh, for example uh, the uh, hard veins and then we have the very uh, uh, delicate uh, uh, veins and so on so they help uh, in giving strength then wings also contain uh, what are called as scales so you must have uh, uh, known that these butterflies and moths uh, they have scales on their wings so for example butterflies they have varied um, kinds of uh, scales which vary in size shape and color and they give various patterns to this wings now wings may be modified for example if you see the mosquitoes i'm sure uh, children you must have heard mosquitoes coming near uh, near your ears and making some sound okay now these uh, wings are uh, modified uh, highly in uh, the diptera diptera di means two tera means wings so for example housefly for example mosquitoes so they all bear only one pair of wings four wings the hind wings are modified into balancing organs the dumbbell shaped structures and they're highly reduced okay so this is how the wings are highly uh, modified then uh, similarly in dragon flies and damsel flies you know whenever you visit uh, some water bodies like small ponds or lakes or streams you can find a number of uh, very colorful creatures uh, you know flittering uh, over the water surface now these are called as damsel flies and dragon flies now in popularly they are called as aeroplanes and helicopters so these um, creatures they also have what are called as highly membranous wings so here the wings are uh, modified um, and they are highly uh, membranous uh, and uh, these uh, flies uh, they are uh, very hard to uh, catch then in beetles you must have seen jewel beetles you must have seen blister beetles you must have seen dung rollers then you must have seen the rhinoceros beetles so these beetles uh, have very hard wings and these are called as elytra okay so the pair of four wings which are very hard in structure are called as elytra and the hind wings are uh, they are uh, very membranous and they are folded and they are enclosed under the cover of the forewings. So, uh, students, you see that the incredible uh, ways in which the wings are shaped on uh, insects. So, these hard forewings are called as uh, elytra and they meet in straight line down the abdomen uh, and the membranes hind wings remain folded underneath this elytra now they give strength for these beetles to uh, fly at an exceedingly rapid rate now just see this photograph students and let me know which are all these creatures are insects so how do you identify these insects in this invertebrate groups the uh, creatures which don't have the backbone or the uh, vertebral column so you must first see how many pairs of wings are there so in the first circle see that creature has three pairs of wings so it's an insect similarly you can see this beetle it is also has uh, three pairs of legs or six legs and then you can also see that you have a housefly which has three pairs of legs. So this is how you can really distinguish the insects from all other groups of invertebrates. Then, as I told you earlier, the insects are divided 
into 30 orders, all insects on planet Earth. Now, these 30 insect orders uh, are uh, very definite. Okay, so with definite characteristics, we can say that these are all bugs, these are all butterflies, these are all beetles. So, for instance, if you take a bug, so every bug is an insect, but all bugs, uh, but all insects are not bugs. So, if you very carefully see the photograph of this insect, you can see that the texture of the wings are highly varied. So some portions are membranous, some portions are hard, some portions are semi-hard. So all those insects which have these kind of wings on their body, they belong to Hemiptera, uh, the order Hemiptera, uh, to which the true bugs uh, belong. And here you can also see a triangular mark in the middle, isn't it? So you can see that. So you can see that there is a triangular mark on that thoracic region or abdominal region. It also uh, encroaches into the abdominal region. So that is what is called as scutal. So all bugs which have different kind texture of wings and have this triangular piece, they all belong to uh, bugs. Then there are also, see for example, these are the different kinds of bugs. So you can appreciate the diversity in this group of insects called as bugs. So some are uh, blood sucking, some are sap sucking, some are predators, some are uh, like the uh, pollen uh, uh, of the flowers. So all these six insects are nothing but bugs. So they belong to the order which is called as hemipterans. Hemi means half, tira means wings. So uh, the insects which have half membranous and half uh, hard wings, they belong to uh, this hemiptera uh, group. So the middle one is called as a drain water bug. So you can see them in any uh, fresh water pools. So if the water is fresh, then only you can find this drain water bug. So if in a water body, jane water bugs are not there, then you can suspect that the water is not pure or clear. Then we move on to another group of insects which are called as coleoptera. Now coleos means hard, tira means wings. So as we discussed earlier, this elytra or the four wings are very hard structures and that's why all these beetles, they belong to the class what are called as the uh, coleoptera. They have tough exoskeleton, their wings are modified into very horny structures called as the el elytra. See, you can see this is the uh, elytra. So they're highly chitinous and uh, the hind wings are folded under the four wings and they're highly membranous and here are called as scrubs. So why they are called as scrubs? Heavy eaters. When compared to their body size and body biomass, group of insects are capable of belong, belong um, to Coleoptera. Scrubs are with brown head and the immatures are called as grubs. So you have cucumber beetle, you have lady beetle, and then you have uh, rhinoceros beetle. So these are different kind of uh, beetles. Then we move on to another group of insects and they're also very important because uh, they transmit uh, human diseases. So you must see here two swing in used 
into dumbbell shaped structures called halteres they all belong to the order diptera which include mosquitoes and house flies so these are very are reduced club shaped uh, dumbbell shaped structures called the haltiers for balancing as you find in aeroplanes and their body uh, bodies are often has so they are covered uh, with this so you can see the green butterfly now this green butterfly is also used uh, in forensic science so this um, uh, bottle uh, uh, green bottle fly uh, by which we can find out that how many days uh, the uh, carcass or the dead body is lying or when that uh, particular creature was killed. Help in pollination of flowers of a majority of plants on planet earth and then we also have the mosquitoes students you must be knowing about uh, the uh, diseases the mosquitoes transmit i'm sure you must be knowing about encephalitis you must be knowing about dengue you must be knowing about flu so uh, you must be also knowing about swine flu so these are all the human diseases which are uh, uh, very tiny creatures called the uh, mosquitoes are often hairy. Now, diptera also includes uh, another uh, fruit flies. Now, fruit flies are all highly important because they damage the sport uh, of fruits. Uh, you manage fruit flies of great global uh, in the to another. Now, I'm sure that the grasshoppers. on plants, grass patches in parks, gardens, uh, and these grasshoppers uh, have long antennae. And here, the hind leg is um, a very long one because they are modified for jumping. So you can see that when you are uh, walking through uh, a grassy patch, uh, the uh, insects they immediately get disturbed and they fly so they are nothing but the grasshoppers so they are the hoppers which live in the grasses so orthoptera belongs um, is a order in which we have grasshoppers locusts catadids and crickets and i'm sure that uh, whenever you have visited some wild areas you must have heard crickets calling uh, during night time so they are called as the uh, crickets uh, and then uh, these grasshoppers are long bodied long leg uh, creatures with the third pair modified for jumping now here the females they lay their eggs in the soil in the wet soil and they lay their eggs uh, in packets um, uh, and uh, uh, they, uh, the size of the packets may be so some packets may contain six eggs some may contain 12 some may contain 18 and so on so these grasshoppers uh, they lay their eggs in the uh, soil and these grasshoppers they communicate through sounds through their chirping sounds by which they rub their leg across their bodies. Another interesting group of insects are the lepidoptera. So I'm sure you've heard this word 
and you have also learned about butterflies and moths. So I would not like to repeat the same thing. And here the wings uh, contain uh, these scales and you have, might have heard a lot about uh, these things and they have coils, mouth bars, siphoning type of mouth bars by which they can drop the nectar from the flowers and they have powdery scales on their wings uh, and uh, uh, butterflies fold their wings flat above the body uh, at uh, uh, rest uh, and uh, the moths are uh, mostly nocturnal in nature and uh, they are important plant uh, pollinators and of course they are also economically important because they damage agriculture, horticultural products. Now we move on to another very interesting and important economical uh, group called as Isoptera. I'm sure you all must have heard isosceles triangles. So triangles which in which all the three sides are similar, they're identical. So similarly, these termites, they bear wings which are identical in nature. So you can see that they're soft-bodied, they're white in color, and they're soil bomb. So they help in decomposition of the uh, matter uh, in the uh, soil, like bark, roots, leaf, and other parts of the uh, plant, both soft and hard. Another very interesting thing about termites, which are also called, otherwise called as white ants, are that it, they are social insects. So they have queen, they have kings, they have workers, they have soldiers, and they live in large built mud houses, what are called as termitaria. So they have worker caste, they have soldier caste, they have king and queen. Now we move on to another group of insects, which are called as homoptera. Home, homo means uniform, tera means wings. So all these insects, which have uniform base of wings of their bodies, are called as homoptera. Now they include cicadas. Now during the rainy season, if you go to the Western Ghats, you can hear a lot of continuous calls uh, emanated by this uh, cicadas. Then it also includes leaf hoppers. It also includes the wingless aphids. So uh, these have membranous wings and they have piercing and sucking type of mouth parts. So again, they vary in color, shape, size, and they are very uh, beautiful. So you can see the first photograph uh, represents group of aphids. The second one uh, represents the cicadas, which have camouflaging or biomimicry characters. And the third one is the leaf hopper. Then we move on to another primitive group of our order of insects, which are called as odonata. Now odonata includes dragonflies and damselflies. So whenever you visit the water bodies like ponds, streams, lakes, and if you see some plants, um, emergent type of vegetation, you can always see that some insects are always associated with those ones. They are nothing but colorful dragonflies and damselflies. They attract the photographers a great deal. They are also popularly called as aeroplanes and helicopters by uh, children. Now, dragonflies hold their wings perpendicular to their body at rest, whereas uh, the damselflies, uh, they uh, open up their uh, wings uh, horizontally. So, damselflies hold clear wings together over abdomen, whereas dragonflies, they spread their wings when at rest. Then we move on to yet another highly evolved. So Odonata are primitive group of insects, but we now move on to a very evolved uh, top uh, insect order, which is called the Hymenoptera. 
Hymenoptera means tira means wings, hymenop means a heart. Okay, so those um, insects which contain little hardy uh, wings, not to the extent of beetles, but a slight hardy wing, they belong to the order which are called as Hymenoptera. Now, this includes bees, ants, and bats. I'm sure you must have seen all the, these three kinds of insects. Honeybees, you must have seen. Then you must have seen ants. So whenever you go to a park or you go to any uh, ground covered with vegetation, you can see a trail of ants connecting wide patches. Okay. So now they are nothing but the ants and they use what are called as the trail pheromone. So with the help of trail pheromone, a chemical which they release uh, all along the a narrow path so these are called the ants and these ants they move one behind the other so then we have what we call as wasps i'm sure you must have seen these wasps too which are quite uh, ferocious now all these three categories of insects like the honeybees the ants and the wasps at the beginning of the abdomen they have a very waste like structure which are called as the um, uh, i mean the uh, the first base of the abdomen has this uh, uh, grown up um, structure now that's that's called a base and this is how we can uh, characterize or identify uh, the uh, groups under the order hymenopter and here uh, in all these um, uh, three groups of insects, you can see that the tip of the abdomen is curved downwards, okay, and inwards. So this is how we can uh, identify uh, these uh, group of um, uh, insects. And uh, they may have or may not have a organ at the tip of the abdomen, at the end of the abdomen. And because these are defensive in nature and they have the stings. Now, these stings, they uh, are um, having uh, some chemicals by which they can ward off their enemies or protect themselves. Okay, so these are called the stinging organs. Now, these stinging organs, they have contain chemicals which are self-defensive in nature. So students, you just see the first uh, insect, so it's a policy, carpenter bees. You know, they make a hissing noise whenever they are flying and if your ears are nearby, this flying bee, you can hear and you can hear that hissing noise. And then the next photograph I see, and uh, see uh, the leaf bit it is carrying. Now, very interesting thing about this ants is that they can carry a load which is much heavier than the uh, load of their own body so this is very interesting so they have an angle and they have a uh, way of carrying uh, these kinds of biomass which are larger uh, than the size of their own body and then the third picture is what is called as a yellow banded wasps so these uh, wasps are also very interesting and they're very useful to human beings because they serve as predators of those insects which damage our crops. So they're highly useful creatures and we should conserve them, we should protect them. Now, if you want to appreciate the different kinds of insects, the different forms of insects, then students, you must know the meaning of the word metamorphosis so what is this metamorphosis what do we mean by metamorphosis so this metamorphosis is nothing but the change in the form of the insect now this is very very crucial that the form of the insect should change if the insect wants to develop if the insect wants to grow change is a must so this change is what is called as metamorphosis. 
So you can see in the figure, you have the adult beetle, and then you have the pupa, you have the larva, and then you have the egg. They are so much different in their shape, size, color, food habits, and the habitat they dwell or occupy. So this is what is called as metamorphosis. So the insects, they undergo metamorphosis and exhibit different forms in their entire life cycle. Now there are various kinds of metamorphosis, but let us not bother about of all the kinds of metamorphosis, but let us group them into two categories. They are called as complete metamorphosis. The other one is called as the incomplete metamorphosis. Now in incomplete metamorphosis, the stages, the life stages of an insect they resemble each other in the form and in the color, but they may vary in their size. So this is what is called as incomplete metamorphosis. So you must have seen uh, bed bugs. Uh, you must have seen uh, uh, bugs as I showed you. So the nymph, uh, what we call, is an immature stage. It doesn't have the wings, but the adult bug has wings. And the difference between the nymph and the adult is in the size and in the color. Okay, so incomplete metamorphosis means the immatures, they resemble the adult. This much we can remember at this stage. And then we have the complete metamorphosis. For example, the butterflies, for example, the beetles, for example, the honeybees. So they represent a complete examples of complete uh, metaphor insects. So here what happens, one stage does not resemble the other stage in form, structure, color, and appendages. So this is what is called as complete metamorphosis. For example, the butterflies, the very good examples are butterflies, very good examples are moths, beetles. So these are the examples of uh, the complete metaphor insects. Now, friends, I have just given a glimpse of the important orders of insects because time does not permit us to deal with all the 30 orders of insects. But it will be very essential for us at this stage to know why insects are important? Why we need to study them? So how we are uh, benefited or how we are affected by insects? Now, as we pointed out earlier, 75% of all creatures on earth are insects. So they are the most species are, it is the group that contains the largest number of species uh, in the, on the planet Earth. Now, one of the very important functions the insects do is that they pollinate plants. Students, in the beginning we said that you may tend to hate insects, but we said insects are lovable. Now, why they are lovable? Because we need them more than the insects themselves, humans need insects simply because if they do not pollinate plants, we will not be able to thrive on this earth. More than 80% of plants, okay, just mark, more than 80% of plants are all pollinated by the insects. So you can imagine how insects are important and how closely linked our lives are with their lives. Now, the second most important function the insects do is nutrient cycling. So, you must be knowing that there are many elements like phosphorus, like so many other elements in the chart which do not move at all or which move very less. And if at all they move in nature, it is through the agency of these creepy crawling creatures called insects. 
So you can see here that you have a number of grubs, white body termites, you have ants, and then you have the dung roller beetles. So they help in the decomposition process which occurs on the uh, earth or in the uh, soil. Then you have the carrion beetles, then you have cockroaches, you have ants, you have termites. And with this, you have a very closely related creature with insects called the millipedes. So these are our decomposing agents. Otherwise, the complex and hard structures would remain as it is on the soil. So they help to a very great extent in decomposition and neutral cycle. Yet another crucial function insects do is that they form a prey for a large number of animals. So you must have seen frogs, you must have seen lizards, you must have seen shoes, you must have seen so many other kinds of uh, uh, animals which solely depend on the insects. If insects were not there, these creatures would have not uh, been surviving on planet. So they serve as food for a variety of animals. You can examine any kind of food chain or food web on large or on a small platform or a template. You can see that insects are there in every trophic structure. This is one thing. And nowadays, because of the protein malnutrition, because of the lack of protein in some of the sections of the human population, whether they are tribals, whether they are poor people, whether they are wild um, cats, okay, they all eat insects because they are a good source of nutritious uh, proteins of high biological value. So you can see some of these uh, photographs and you can also go through uh, these things uh, in the uh, Google uh, network. Now, yet another unseen uh, function, crucial function carried out by insects are that they are important predators, parasites, and parasites. Now, what are predators? So, you must have uh, seen cats like tigers and lions. So, how they pounce upon the prey and they kill them. So, they are called as predators. So, similarly, in the insect world, we have predators. So, what they do is they just grab the smaller insects which damage our crops and they just devour them. And they are larger in size than the prey. So, these are called as predators. Now, what are parasites? Now, parasites are nothing but those insects which are smaller in nature and which stupefy or which uh, make the insect inactive or anesthetize and lay their eggs and the eggs develop inside the body of the host and the adults come out. Now, these are what are called as the uh, parasites. Now, what are pathogens? So pathogens are again very small microscopic organisms like bacteria, viruses, fungus, okay, protozoans, which can kill large bodied creatures. So insects play a very definitive role in all these categories uh, of the parasites. So they act as predators, they serve as parasites, they serve as parasitoids, and they can also uh, be linked uh, to pathogenic uh, microorganisms uh, which carry on their body. Now, another very uh, important uh, function of insects are that they are vectors. So these uh, are becoming uh, of greater importance year after year, decades after decades. So you must have seen how this pandemics how this uh, uh, human diseases uh, are uh, uh, causing enormous damage to the human population on planet Earth. So insects 
directly or indirectly are associated with this kind of deadly uh, diseases uh, and for some of these diseases we even don't have uh, uh, medicines are the uh, curative uh, practice to curb uh, or to cure the diseases. Another very interesting and important function of insects are that they can serve as uh, the uh, uh, what you call uh, um, uh, not only vectors but they can directly damage uh, the humans and the livestock. So they are medically important. So you must have seen the bed bugs, you must have seen the fleas, you must have seen the house flies, the mosquitoes. So they all are uh, very uh, important in our daily life. And then uh, insects are also very important in finding uh, the scientific principles. So they are used as models to evolve theories, to test scientific uh, principles and uh, uh, develop uh, the uh, science. So uh, this is how uh, the insects uh, are again important. Students, I'm sure you all must have tasted honey. So where does the honey come from? So it comes from the honeybees, again the insects. And uh, students, I'm sure that whenever you carry a parcel from a post office or from some other um, agency, uh, courier agency, you can see on the parcel some red, dark red dots or they, they will become, the parcel will be completely, or the cloth will be completely sealed by dark red uh, spots. Okay, what are those? They are nothing but the shala. And this shellac comes from the lac insect. It's a scale insect. Now, the third thing is the silk. Now, where does the silk come from? So, the silk comes from the silkworms. And again, silkworms are nothing but the insects. So, we can rear these insects on bulberry plants or we can rear these insects on uh, the castor plants um, or we can rear these silkworms on other plants as we uh, find in Assam, Harry silkworm or Muga silkworm. So all the shawls, all the saris which you uh, see uh, in the market uh, which are made of silk, they all are derived from the insect world. So we have honeybees, we have silkworm, we have shellac, we have bee wax, we have honey. So these are all the commercial products which cannot be found other than from the insect world. Now more than 95% or more than 96% or 7% of the insects are beneficial or they are neutral. But only a very small percentage of insects are harmful, especially to the crops. So they damage our crops. Like you can see tomato. See, you can see how the tomato is being damaged by the uh, larva. And you can also see the unripe tomato. You can see the ripened tomato. You can see other uh, kinds of vegetables which are damaged by this uh, insects. So insects are crop pests and they are globally important. More than 15% of agricultural, horticultural products are all damaged by insects. Although they constitute only 1-2%, to but their damage is enormous and we cannot have an estimation of how much of loss these insects cause to the farms or to the world at large. So again here, insects are of, important, of overriding importance as well as their economic importance. So these are some of the crops. You can see mangoes, you can see some other fruit crops. How the fruit flies are damaging and how the mango fruits are decaying 
due to the damage of the fruit flies and they render these fruits unedible. You cannot eat these fruits which are damaged by the uh, pests, insect pests especially. So pests are again globally important and they are of uh, uh, high economic importance. The, another very important uh, aspect about the insect world is that they can fly from one geographical region from one country to another. Second thing is that the, through the agency of humans or through some other means, they can be brought from one country inadvertently to the other. So this also pose lot of threat to the indigenous uh, biodiversity. So these such insects are called as invasive insects. So for example, you have here among the uh, invasive insects, the coffee berry bird. So this coffee berry borer is again a very important introduced insect just 10 years back into India from the temperate world. So students, I uh, hope you got a glimpse of the insect. So uh, what are the main characteristics of insects? How we can distinguish insects from other creatures? What is the importance of insects? Now we come to the another aspect of insects. So how you can enjoy working with insects or what you can do with uh, insects. So uh, in this pandemic period, in this period where the moments of children or students are restricted, what are some of the projects, interesting projects, mind boundary projects you can take up on insects? Friends, insects are declining at an exceedingly rapid rate. Now, in universities, earlier we used to prescribe that each student should bring hundreds of insects in order to know about the insects. Now, we have stopped this because we know that every day we are losing a lot many insects. And not only that, we are damaging uh, their biodiversity, not only biodiversity, but the balance of nature. So uh, we need to protect insects. So insect conservation is very important. So if you see some butterflies, beautiful butterflies, if you see some beautiful beetles, you need to preserve them as it is. You do not have to kill and then preserve, but you see that their habitat is preserved. So you can study what are the requirements of the insects. And once we know the requirements of insects, the foot of insects, the plants of insects, the habitat of insects, you can contribute to insect conservation and balance of nature. And the another important thing about insects is that insects are pollinators. As we told, one third of all economically important cultivated plants are pollinated by insects. In the wild, more than 80% of plants are pollinated by insects. So you can think how important it is to conserve the pollinators, the butterflies, the uh, uh, hoverflies, uh, the bees, the wasps, the thrips, uh, the bugs, the beetles. So there are so many kinds of insects which help in pollination of plants. We need to conserve them. So what you can see is that if an insect alights on a flower or if it alights on a bloom or a bud, so you can carefully watch them without disturbing them and see whether they are pollinators. And once you recognize that, yes, this is a pollinator, then you can think of conserving the pollinators. So what you can do? So you can see that no insecticides or poisonous chemicals are poured on those plants. Similarly, you can advise if you have a farm, if you are a farmer, if you are 
uh, you hail from a farmer's family. So you can uh, teach your parents, you can show these pollinators to your parents and tell them that we need to conserve them. Then they need some uh, fresh water, then they need some flowering plants. That's all what we need to conserve the pollinators. And then we need also to conserve the insect diversity. So if in a patch you find lots of insects, if you find incredible number of different forms, colors and shapes of insects, you can certainly say that that uh, patch is a healthy patch. But if you see another patch which are devoid of insects or which are very meager, then you can say that the patch is affected. Now, there is another uh, beauty, there is another uh, interesting aspect of insects is nothing but the chemicals with which they are associated. So insects emit a lot of chemicals, different kinds of chemicals. Some are attractants, some are uh, uh, repellents, some have neutral function, then some are uh, secondary metabolites and some are what are called as pheromones. So these pheromones, they can attract the opposite sex of the insects. So these uh, chemicals have been exploited to manage the insects, to reduce the population of insects. So these uh, odorous chemicals, which are highly cooperative, are called as pheromones. So you can also see that how insects emit uh, these uh, chemicals and how interesting their behavior, which is associated with this pheromones. And then insects also carry out, I said, the soil porosity, soil aeration, soil air conditioning. They all are regulated by these adaptive uh, creatures, which are called as soil arthropods or soil insects. So they maintain the fertility, they upturn the subsurface soil to surface, they increase the organic matter, they increase the uh, glutinous of the soil particles, they bind the soil particles, they prevent them from erosion. What So insects do a indomitable uh, work as far as the soil is uh, concerned. So insects and soil are closely linked or related. Now insect behavior, I'm sure, will has attracted and will attract in future a large number of students, a large number of intelligible uh, young minds. Okay, so you can see here how the honeybees they communicate through dances. So we have vagal dance, we have uh, round dance, we have simple dance, and so on. So through this um, uh, come, uh, I mean behavior patterns, they communicate a lot of information to the uh, fellow creatures. Now, another interesting thing is, as we said, that the insects are found in all the trophic structures. So um, plants are producers, then we have primary consumers, we have secondary consumers, we have tertiary consumers. So insects have a role in all these trophic uh, structures and so they are crucially important in an ecosystem. The ecology, the environment and insects again are very closely related. So you can uh, study uh, a plant. Uh, in your backyard or in your uh, uh, garden and see what are the different kinds of insects that are associated with the plant and what they are doing, whether they are consuming the leaf, whether they are consuming the stem, whether they are attracted to flowers, whether they are pollinating the flowers or whether they are also uh, associated uh, with the roots of the plants. So this all uh, come under what is called as insect uh, ecology. So, uh, students, I thank uh, Professor uh, uh, and also uh, the uh, Center for Ecological Sciences for giving an opportunity to share some of the ideas on the insect world. 
So again, I thank you uh, for the opportunity to share some of the ideas and insights today with the students. Yes. Is there any effect on insects during the pandemic? Shruti Prakash is asking. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, see, as soon as uh, uh, the lockdown was there, uh, Shruti, uh, you must have heard that uh, many people reported that there are lots of birds and in many of the water bodies, uh, we could see a large number of birds simply because there was no disturbance from the human activities and there was no pollution. So similarly, because insects are small creatures, they are not visible immediately. But when we carefully examine uh, on a large or on a small scale, insects definitely are affected to a great extent. By the pandemic directly or in the virus is spread through the insects. Yes, thank you. Yes, Kritik Gopana has asked Is there a chance of survival of honeybee after its first time? Chances are very less uh, the thick uh, because what they do is uh, when they sting, actually, the stinging organ comes out of them. And when once the seeing organs detach from their body, their lifespan is considerably reduced. He has another question, sir. Why do these crickets do the most annoying sound during monsoon? Yeah, because that is their breeding season. So uh, during uh, for mating, for copulation, and for successful um, perpetuation of their generation, the insects attract the opposite sex through their stimulation or through their sound organs. Uh, that's a music too yeah so for our ears human ears it's noise but for them it's a melodious music. yeah Karthik Saleh Uttal whether locust attack uh, migration in India is common or any other reason uh, no this uh, locust uh, for example in uh, 2020 just few months back uh, we had locust in northwest India okay and it was advancing towards central India so that is a normal uh, routine. What happened in Iran and in Afghanistan and in Pakistan, the rains were received early. So this time what happened, the locusts emerged from the soil because uh, as pupa, they remain under the soil. So when it rains, then they trigger to emerge out of the soil. And then when uh, a lot of food is actually their grasshoppers. Uh, if you examine, uh, they are basically grasshoppers. But during certain favorable conditions, they become a highly, uh, what you call, um, uh, they, they can eat, they can consume um, a very large amount of food and they can multiply also very rapidly. So this form is what is called as a locust. Question from Shravana. How do the crickets produce such an irritating sound? Yeah. He Any special mechanism? Yeah. Uh, see, uh, the, 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 if you take any um, uh, what you call uh, hard uh, I mean, uh, structure and if you just rub against a, star, uh, a very hard structure like an iron, so it produces a kind of sound. So this is a file and razor mechanism. So here what happens, the legs, they uh, rotate uh, with uh, the uh, uh, hard structures uh, which will be at the base of their um, uh, legs so uh, are uh, at the uh, thorax so when the legs uh, which uh, carry a lot of uh, striations or extensions very hard teeth like tooth like structure when they rub against uh, the membranous uh, portion of the body they produce this. Uh, Ramya has a question. Is there any insect which are beneficial to crop growth or crop yield? Uh, what's the please uh, Is uh, there uh, any insects uh, which are beneficial to crop growth uh, or crop yield? Yes, definitely, uh, Sanya. So we uh, talked about uh, uh, our pollinators. So unless we have the uh, pollination by these uh, uh, insects, uh, we will not have a good eat. Say, for example, sunflower. 
So if you consume the sunflower oil, which is not pollinated, it will not be nutritious. But if you consume a sunflower oil, which is the flowers are pollinated by honeybees, it will be highly nutritious. And for your information, there are lots of uh, uh, stories where wars were um, made and the uh, uh, soldiers which could not get food pollinated by insects, they got defeated in the war. And those uh, countries whose soldiers uh, had consumed uh, food uh, uh, pollinated by insects, they, were, uh, they won the war. So this is how, to a great extent, the food quality and the plant quality is influenced by the activities of insects. Shruti Prakash has a question. Which all insects can be used as natural biological pest control measure or as an agent to avoid pathogen attack on plants? Yeah. Uh, say, for example, we have ladybird beetles. For example, we have wasps. For example, we have praying mantis. I'm sure you must have seen praying mantis. So praying mantis, then I told you about uh, the dragonflies and damselflies. Then we told about wasps. So these are all beneficial insects which can protect the plant from the uh, herbivorous insects. Tejasvini has a question. What helps the ants to carry heavy weight? Any secretions helps them? Uh, uh, no, it is not the, um, uh, I mean, uh, secretions in the sense that uh, uh, they retain the energy because the fat uh, which is uh, uh, stored in the insect it will be in a fluid form. Okay, so these uh, fat, they are nothing but the source of energy. Now, these source of energy, they are stored in a, a liquid so that the ants will derive a lot of, because when these fats break, they not only get the water, but they also get the source of energy and they are able to push uh, the weight more than their body weight. So, um, Ruduna has a question. How can we use predator insects to control garden pests? Huh. So for that, what you do, Miduna, you find out that uh, um, what are the plants uh, to which this uh, uh, predators take shelter. Because these predators will not be found in all kinds of plants. So you must first identify some of the plants and then you must see that uh, no poisonous chemicals or insecticides are kept there. Okay, And then you also maintain a diversified uh, kind of uh, uh, garden. Okay, so then definitely they will get different kinds of prey uh, to uh, predate upon and thrive. Prakash Mishka sir has a question. How honeybees are producing royal jelly? Yeah, so this is uh, uh, produced by the um, queen. Now this queen, what it does, it uh, uh, feeds only selective individuals uh, with this royal jelly which are destined to become uh, the queens in the future or they become uh, the originators of the founding new colonies. So there's a special kind of uh, uh, protein and food that is manufactured and then given or fed to only selective individuals. Danush has a question, sir. Why do insects need to survive? Yeah, it's, uh, see, uh, Albert Einstein and even Chaturved was also speaking on butterflies. He clearly showed a, a slide of uh, with photograph of Albert Einstein. He said, if there are no pollinators, there's no life on planet. Because there will be no rejuvenation of plants. There will be no procreation of the plants. The, the vegetation cannot be maintained on planet Earth and we all will perish. Okay, so insects are important to that an extent. So, Smehar Shah has a question. Sir, as it was locked down around two months, yeah. is there change in climate and is there increase of insect as there was less population, as the vehicle movement was less comparatively? Less comparatively pollution, pollution. Yes. Less pollution. Yeah, less pollution. Huh. Yes. As sure. the vehicle movement was less comparatively. Yeah, sure, uh, sure, uh, Snail. Uh, this is an obvious uh, consequence of uh, less pollution, less movement, less disturbance, more food, and more uh, favorable habitat. There's another question by Prakash Mishra, sir. Are there any insect museums in India? Sure. Uh, see, you can uh, go to New Delhi uh, in, in Agricultural Research Institute has a very big in, uh, 
uh, insect museum. Similarly, if you go to Kolkata, the Zoological Survey of India, uh, the headquarters is there, but in every state, you can find branches of the Zoological Survey of India where insects are preserved. Yes, yeah, even uh, uh, Professor is telling that even uh, the CES, Center for Sciences, from where we are uh, speaking to you, has a good collection of insects. Rashmi has a question What is the difference between grasshoppers and crickets? What makes up the primary reason for extinction of certain insects? Yeah, see, the difference between grasshoppers and crickets is that grasshoppers they have very long antennae and uh, the legs the third pair of legs is modified for uh, jumping and here in case of uh, uh, the grasshoppers we have short horn grasshoppers and we have long horn, long horn grasshoppers and accordingly we have different forms of antennae so different forms of antennae different forms of wings and different uh, uh, what you call types of legs make them uh, distinguish. Uh, this is how we can distinguish. And uh, uh, crickets they become active during night, but most of the grasshoppers are active during daytime. Now, although they belong to the same order called the Orthoptera, there are subtle differences between the two. Ashwarya, Ashwarya has a question: How does mango fruit fly manage to survive during off season of mangoes? Yeah. So what it does is, uh, see the fruit flies. They damage and lay eggs on the fruits. Now the fruits, uh, the eggs, they develop into grubs and they completely damage the fruit of the pulp inside and it rots and the fruit drops. So when the fruit drops, it contains the grub or the pupae of the fruit flies and the pupae of the fruit fly again, they go to the soil and during off season they remain. Now when again the uh, favorable conditions come, they emerge from the soil. So this is one route. The other route is that during the mango season, if there is any other tree which belongs to the same family as uh, the mango, there's a mangifera indica, then the uh, fruit flies can um, survive on the alternate host trees. Diksha has a question. Do insects play any role in maintaining fertility in the soil? Definitely. So, as we discussed and showed the uh, this one also, I told you that uh, for soil conditioning, conditioning and soil aeration, they play a very important role. And for the percolation of water, uh, okay, again porosity, they increase porosity, and uh, by their defecation, they increase the soil organic matter. So, these are all the major uh, changes insects can bring about in the soil structure and structure. Snehal has asked a similar question uh, that uh, was there any difference in climate change during lockdown and did it affect positively the growth of variety of organisms? Sure, definitely positive. Yeah, it has played a positive. Uh, Vinay has a question what are the types of families of insects? Oh, the uh, in each order we have hundreds of families when i so uh, i think uh, you can call me or uh, you can uh, we can discuss this sometime so there are number of families in each uh, uh, order of the uh, insects and under each family we have thousands of species uh, manavna shetty has a question locust grasshoppers and mantis are how they evolve does nature play any major role or they themselves get bigger too uh, no, definitely nature plays a very important role and uh, the food what they eat, okay, and uh, the rains, uh, the uh, temperature conditions, the relative humidity and the conditions of the soil in which they um, uh, pass their uh, resting state all matter as far as their bigger is concerned. Vinay Gopal has a question, uh, in dragonflies, uh, any families and types? Yes, again, we have we have so many different kinds of uh, families. Of course, I don't want to tell their names because it will sound Greek and Latin to you. Again, you can contact me later. You can definitely look up because the answer is not so short to complete. Uh, Rashmi has a question. Uh, why there is absence of hemoglobin in the blood of insects? Yeah, uh, see, no, but uh, there are certain insects, very rare insects, which attack the vertebrates and even uh, they um, uh, suck the blood. They have in their blood, say, for example, if a mosquito, uh, 
it sucks the blood definitely their body will also have the hemoglobin because it is transferred to the insect but majority of the insects they don't have this pigment uh, which um, uh, i mean gives red color to their uh, blood so and in plant um, uh, sucking or plant uh, um, uh, feeding uh, insects uh, the uh, plant sap uh, the color of the sap of the plant will be the color of the uh, insect so kartik salehital has another question whether shape and size of butterfly scales are same in all species or are they different they are totally different uh, venita has a question uh, all in does all insect are uh, cold blood Are all yeah, because uh, uh, corporate in the sense uh, we tell them that the body temperature is regulated by the surrounding temperature, so that's how they can survive. So if you take an insect from a very high temperature uh, temperature condition like desert, its um, uh, body temperature will be high. But if you go to a Himalayan region and if you collect in the grasshopper from a very uh, high altitude, its um, uh, body temperature will be very low. Uh, Manukna Shetty again has another question. How can we differentiate moth caterpillar and butterfly caterpillar? Mm -hmm. uh, does it have adverse effect on agriculture? Which has more? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, these uh, definitely the caterpillars of moths have more adverse effects than butterfly because very few butterfly species uh, uh, they attack crop plants. Okay, and uh, uh, the uh, uh, caterpillars of butterflies will be generally smooth. They will be highly colored, whereas uh, the uh, caterpillars of moths will be highly hairy, and they contain a protein in their hairs called as arthropodin. And if you disturb, then they will eject that arthropodin, and the, you will get rashes on the skin. And they will be usually dark brown or dark uh, black in color. Abhishek Rayal has a question: Is there any method to find pollinated or non-pollinated something? Yeah, definitely. Uh, see, uh, if the um, uh, flowers, uh, sunflowers are not pollinated, then uh, they will not be filled. And uh, if uh, the bees have pollinated the uh, sunflower, then both the uh, florets, the ray florets and the uh, disc florets, they, they will have um, uh, pollination will have occurred and you will see the seeds are fully filled. So here you will get chaffy seeds, and in pollinated ones you will get the field seeds. Uh, Swati Neshpanda has a question: Do all predators kill their prey before they eat? Yes. Uh, right. Srinob has a question: What makes butterflies different from moths so that moths can be seen at night? Yeah. Uh, see, uh, this I think has very clearly told by. Uh, uh, the earlier speaker also uh, in uh, butterflies. Um, uh, uh, what is the question? What, what the question? makes butterflies different from moths? Uh, yeah. See, uh, butterflies, um, their uh, metabolism and uh, the uh, kind of food they eat is totally different from moths. Now, most of the moths are nocturnal, whereas butterflies are diurnal. And most of the butterflies. They derive their uh, what you call the source of food from the flowers, but in moths they may derive from different parts of the plants. Danya has a question: uh, Is it true that dragonfly grow bigger in size if it gets more oxygen? If true, how? Uh, no, I don't think uh, it is. Uh, uh, I mean, only solely related to the uh, oxygen, because generally what we have seen is. That dragonfly's size is definitely larger than damselflies. Now, dragonflies are more robust when compared to damselflies. Damselflies are very uh, delicate. They are very narrow. They have very narrow uh, body, and their uh, metabolic demand is very low when compared to the dragonflies. So, definitely, dragonflies are larger in size than damselflies. Rashmi has a question: Why red ants often damage plants? Uh, no, these uh, red ants have multiple roles. In some plants, they damage, they bring the leaves together and they make the nest and they also attack the fruits. But in others, they play a role of a uh, predator. And in some others, they play a uh, role of uh, uh, commensalism. So these red ants, Ecophila smartina, what we call, have different uh, roles in different uh, plant ecosystems. Uh, Prithik Bopanna has a question. Is there any biological pest control for coffee berry borer? No. 
there is no uh, uh, I mean which can be taken on commercial scale. But there are certain viruses and there are certain microorganisms which have been commercialized for the management of this uh, uh, coffee berry odor. But sanitation is very important to manage this pest in coffee plantations. Glanich has a question. Uh, did globalization affect adversely on homopterans? Yes. Yes. Uh, Shino has a question. Why moths and other insects are attracted to light? Yeah, because uh, uh, their uh, gonadal activity is uh, uh, activated uh, with the help of the light. Uh, Prakash Mishra sir has another question. Can we rare insects, mm. like insects garden, which are the plants you recommend in colorful insect garden? No, it varies. Uh, what's his name? Uh, yeah, Prakash. See, it uh, varies. What kind of say you want to rear uh, butterflies? You want to rear bugs? You want to rear a mouse? You want to rear beetles? So they all have different methods. See, one method cannot hold good to mass rear all these different kinds of insects because their food habits are incredibly different. So, about the questions. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yes. So uh, I thank uh, Chakravarti sir for taking us to through the wonderful uh, buzzing worlds of uh, bees, insects, moths, and uh, making us understand about uh, about its uh, different characteristics and morphology, metamorphosis, and everything. So I hope all the students and participants have been benefited by this. Uh, webinar and thank you for uh, asking very wonderful uh, questions and actively participating in the session i uh, once again yeah there are few questions